The big technetium paper is finally out and today I can show you a part of our technetium chemistry. Specifically, we'll be looking at lanthanide pertechnetates. A brief overview, what, how, where and why. Lanthanides are a collective term for the elements 57 lanthanum 271 lutetium. Excluding promethium for now because it will get its own video. They have all quite similar chemistry. For example, they are all stable with the oxidation state of plus 3. Of course, there are exceptions that are stable with other oxidation states, but that's for the future. Lanthanides are abbreviated as LN. What is going to be done in the video? The oxides of lanthanides, samarium and praseodymium are reacted with pertechnetic acid. In an acid-base reaction, the respective lanthanide pertechnetate and water will form. The crystal structure is then determined to compare it with other lanthanide pertechnetates. Unfortunately, we don't have pertechnetic acid, we have dissolved ammonium pertechnetate. But you can replace the ammonium cation with simple H plus by using a suitable ion exchange resin. For this, we need to build a column. So build the column, produce pertechnetic acid, react it with lanthanide oxide and compare the crystal structure with other lanthanide pertechnetates. First, the samarium oxide is weighted. I don't wear gloves for lanthanide oxide as they are harmless and I will wear gloves later for way too long. The goal here was to weigh 2.1 milligrams equivalent to 6.022 millimoles. After chasing around too much powder, we settled for 2.05 milligrams. The praseodymium oxide was packed under argon, so I close it after each use to preserve the powder's condition. Here 1.91 milligrams should be weighted equivalent to 5.79 millimole. Yes, this is really PR203, not the mixed valent PR6011, which contains both the praseodymium 3 plus and praseodymium 4 plus and it would be much cheaper, but the synthesis wouldn't work with it. Now let's build the column. The column is a repurposed PE plastic pipette. A piece of the Teflon tape is added to prevent the ion exchange beads from being flushed out. 200 microliters of a saturated aqueous solution with the amber chrome 50WX8 100 to 200 mesh H plus ion exchange is first added to the column. This is rinsed twice with 200 microliters of distilled water to saturate it with protons, which will replace the ammonium ions later on to form the pertechnetic acid. Due to high surface tension and limited space in the column, air needs to be drawn out with a syringe to allow the water to flow through the resin. If everything works, the solution in the Eppendorf tube should be clear. If beads are visible, discard and redo all of it. Adds not too critical since yet nothing toxic or radioactive is involved. The column is fully saturated when the water coming out is neutral. If not, rinse with more water. So before the technetium comes into play, I should explain to you how this ion exchange resin works. I already explained that in a video about the perinates and I highly recommend you watch this, which might answer some other questions. So, the exchange resin are basically plastic beads. The information 100 to 200 in their name refers to the size of the beads, so it's somewhere in the 100 micrometer range. The exact structure of the resin beads differs and is company secret, but basically they look something like this. Some polymer with acid groups on them. The sulfonic acid group is a very important group in inorganic chemistry. By rinsing it with water, you make sure that most of the acid groups have protons. Now, when the ammonium pertechnetate flushes through, the ammonium ion gets exchanged for protons because the acid group is well an acid group. And the ammonium ion stays in the resin and out comes a solution of protons and pertechnetate ions. Pertechnetic acid. Now for the exciting part, technetium chemistry. I made a separate video on the technetium solution, but to recap, the bottle is heavily contaminated due to the high mobility of the pertechnetate ion, making decontamination nearly impossible. So now that I've touched it, the measure. Right, okay. 40 microliters of ammonium pertechnetate solution is placed in an Eppendorf tube with 60 microliters of water. This 100 microliter volume is then passed through the column to produce pertechnetic acid. The concentration is trivial, what matters is the correct amount of pertechnetic acid to form the pertechnetate. The column is then rinsed twice with 200 microliters to ensure all pertechnetic acid is eluded down. We change the tips each time to avoid contaminating the distilled water bottle. If the aluate is still acidic, more water is needed. You can tell it's done by the pH paper no longer being radioactive, indicating all of technetium is now in the Eppendorf tube.
The pertechnetic acid is added to the lanthanide oxide and the tube is heated in a water bath to dissolve the oxide, allowing the compounds to react and form hopefully the pertechnetate to later on crystallize out. Once crystallized, the crystal structure can be determined. This is how we have characterized many of the new pertechnetates over the past two years. It was way more difficult than shown here as some pertechnetates wouldn't crystallize. Here I focus only on the lanthanides, specifically on the lighter f-block elements as I think they don't get enough credit here on YouTube. Trends can be seen as they are all trivalent. But for now, let's enjoy all of the known lanthanide pertechnetates. After viewing these beautiful crystals under the microscope, let's dive into the structural analysis. Lanthanide pertechnetates, like other pertechnetates, have a structure where a trivalent lanthanide ion sits in the center with the pertechnetate acting as a ligand. It binds via one of the four oxygen atoms, which is symmetrical as the pertechnetate ion is tetrahedral. Notably, they do not all have the same amount of crystal water. Water molecules also coordinate to the lanthanide ion. There is a trend, the heavier lanthanides form tetrahydrates and the lighter ones form the trihydrate due to lanthanide contraction causing smaller ionic radii and a higher charge density. Large lanthanides have a higher coordination number which makes sense as larger atoms have more space around them. Compared to pyrenates from the previous video, differences between the pyrenates and the pertechnetates are evident. Here are the bond length of the lanthanide oxygen in pertechnetates and perinates and the bond length of the lanthanide to crystal water oxygen. Why is this important? This is fundamental research. Characterizing pertechnetates against perinates helps us to understand atomic theories better and the structure of the periodic table. Additionally, characterizing lanthanide aids in understanding the periodic table structure as there has been a long-standing debate on how lanthanides should be placed in the periodic table. The structural information gained here supports this arrangement in the periodic table. These are the benefits if you do something like this systematically. 
A special thanks goes to Clarence for guiding me through the synthesis for this video and to our Technetium undergraduate research group, Turk, for the countless hours spent characterizing these pertechnetates. And to my Patreons. With that being said, thank you for your attention and goodbye.